Well, 2020, the worst year of my life. Typically, at the end of the year, I usually do like my favorite photos of the year. And I wasn't gonna do one this year, but I've decided I wanna start 2021 off on a positive note. So this, this video isn't gonna be about the negative stuff. I'm gonna show some of my favorite photos of the year. My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. I wanted to be a landscape photographer. But with a family to feed and bills to pay, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. It was time to follow my passion. Come along on my journey to become the best black and white photographer I can be. Whether it be film or digital, I will be sharing what I learned through my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is right in the edge. Now it's pretty slim pickings this year. I usually have <laughs> a little bit more to show for myself at the end of the year. But looking back, I, I have a few photos that I, I kind of like. So uh, I thought I'd go ahead and share them in this video. So the first photo from 2020 was a uh, stump and some moss back in January. I started the year with uh, taking a walk around the low water mark of a reservoir near my house. And I was really attracted to the moss and the texture of the moss. It was kind of like a carpet. The light was, was at a really good angle and the stump added a lot of structure to the image. It's very, very simple, very minimalist. One thing I did do pretty good in 2020 was because I wasn't able to photograph a lot, I made sure that most of the time when I was out making images, I had my video camera along. That's something, right? I'm trying to figure out a composition here. It's, it's fairly cluttered. I'm thinking about using this kind of one tree as it's kind of the anchor point for the, for the composition. I really like the kind of dusting of uh, snow on these leaves. The second shot came in February. It's probably one of my favorite shots of the year. I really like this scene. The dusting of the snow, just a great, great atmosphere. It's composed very basic. It's, the tree is pretty much dead center. It's kind of like the, the tree standing out front with its uh, army of trees behind. <laughs> this next shot came from first of three backpacking trips I took in 2020. And this was to the Oregon Dunes. I was out looking for a, a good place to shoot dune photos. <laughs> and, and I was really struggling. And I came across this uh, detail shot that I really liked while packing out in a, in a forested area. I really liked this, this moss or fungus. It was kind of an abstract image that I, I kind of find appealing. I don't think it's something that most people would actually enjoy. It was my plan in 2020 to backpack more or go out for more overnight on more overnight trips. And I did manage to put in a few, so I guess it wasn't a complete loss. I had two shots from that backpacking trip from the Oregon coast. And the second shot is a shot where I actually found some dunes after I backpacked back out to my car and drove to another location to do a little scouting before I headed home. And I found an area where the dunes were exactly what I was looking for. Unfortunately, I didn't find them until later in the trip, but I was still able to make a few images in those dunes that uh, I actually liked quite a bit. And this image is one that I really didn't think that much about when I made the video. Just, just a simple wide angle shot with a nice texture and lines leading back to a, a dead stump in the, that's uh, mostly buried in the uh, sand. 
the uh, Oregon Dunes is one of those areas where I went to just before the pandemic hit, and I had planned on going back to do some more photography, and I just never got to. So I'm hoping in 2021 that the Oregon Dunes and that and those dunes in particular are going to be on my list of uh, places to visit. So in March I did a video testing Delta 100 shot at 50, developed for 50, basically overexposing and underdeveloping to get a finer grain structure. And this image came from that, that uh, experiment, that video. I was very happy with the results I got from this little experiment. So much so that I decided I would go ahead and make Delta 100 my go-to film for the rest of the year. In May, I got out for a, a quick shoot after being in lockdown quite a while. And this, this image was the last one I had made uh, while out making that video. It's very simple, but I was really attracted to the simplicity of it. The, uh, the, I was attracted to the light tone of the fern against the, the background, the dark background of the fourth floor. I also was attracted to the, the contrast between the shape of the, 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 the uh, defined kind of a triangle shape of the fern versus the repeating pattern of the forest floor underneath the foliage. It, it's not something you would probably see in a portfolio, but I do like the image. This next shot was from that same shoot in May. And it's a, a, just a real simple panel of a creek, of a creek scene. I'd learned a while back that I could effectively stitch uh, film frames to get, make panels just like you can in digital. Really never really did that much. And two and a quarter, it, it made actually a, a, a pretty good size a negative. So every once in a while, if I saw a scene that I liked as a panel, I would, I would shoot it in film. In, with medium format film. I just like the, the peacefulness of the scene. It just, it's just a nice, peaceful, simple forest scene. It's, it's, I didn't do a lot of panels this year, but it was one of my favorites. So in June, I got out for my second backpacking trip of the year into the Oregon Badlands Wilderness. It was a hard trip. It was, uh, <laughs> It was no water, I had to carry all my water, so I was carrying my medium format camera gear with a lot of weight. Wasn't able to go a long ways in, just far enough to get me back in there to where I could have a base camp and then kind of shoot from around that area. It's probably one of the more productive trips I took this year. Well, I only took three backpacking trips. <laughs> but I really did like the, that environment, the, uh, the rawness of it, the... Uh, the difficulty of life hanging on in that harsh environment. I'm always attracted to that. And this first image is a is just a, a real real basic shot just of a tree in really good light, um, smack dab in the center. It's all about the texture. We've got some sagebrush. We've got some uh, plant life underneath. You can see that's kind of an environmental portrait but the textures of, of the gnarly bark of this decaying dead tree, it's been probably been dead for many, many years. And just going back into the earth, I just found this an extremely appealing image. It's not beautiful <laughs> by any means, but it is interesting. At least I find it interesting. The second shot from this trip was another fairly close up shot of a, another dead tree. But what I found so fascinating about this tree is it still had most of its limbs, and it they made such a, a cool graphic element to the picture. Getting up and cl get up close, having the limbs all around, going off in all directions, kind of gives it a real abstract feel. Again, it, it's a it's a shot I really like that I, I don't think a lot of people are going to really like. The end of June took me out on my last backpacking trip of the year. And this time I was in the uh, Mount Jefferson Wilderness in a burned area. It burned many years ago. And there was just still a lot of skeleton, a lot of remains of 
of uh, trees still standing, kind of like a ghost forest. But what I, what I did notice on this trip was a new forest is, is coming up amongst the, the dead trees. That's, a, that's kind of a nice story. That's kind of a nice juxtaposition, having the, the new trees and the old trees. In, the, in this first shot, I have a broken off stump in the foreground with a bunch of trees that are still standing, uh, dead trees still standing in the background. Their fate will be the same as, as the one in the foreground at some point. But amongst those trees, you see the, the seedlings, the younger forest coming up. That's kind of cool. This shot is one I really thought much of when I took at the time and when I made the video. But as I look back on it, out of all of them, it probably has more of a story showing the process, the cycle of life in the forest with fire and with death and with new life. And this next shot also came from that backpacking trip. It, it's, a, it's a panorama. It was another one of my favorite panoramas of the year. And this one was also focusing, really, it was about the trees, about the ghost forest. I really liked the, the side light highlighting the, the edges of the trees against the, the, the shadows in the background. So this next shot came in July. A simple wildfire shot in the most unlikely of places for me. This was in an empty lot across the street from the apartment I was living in at the time. It was the shot I had to travel the least for. This shot illustrates that a lot of times you don't have to travel very far for an image. The kind of things I photograph, it's not really about the place. It's more about the essence of nature in black and white. I usually don't have to go that far. I think the farthest I went this year was about 150 miles. But everything else was within probably 60 miles of my house. That, that's fairly typical for me, for photography. I happen to live in an area that I have so much at my fingertips. I have so much here to photograph that I don't have to go a long ways to see. The shot that I made in July, I was out experimenting with trying to stitch two frames together with my medium format camera, my 645 medium format camera, to get a square crop. Just seeing what it would be like to shoot with a square format, not cropping the film, but actually making the negative bigger. I came across this chaotic scene with these trees. And this is another one of those shots that only certain people might like. It's very chaotic. The darkness of the tree trunk is really the only thing that um, holds your attention. I like that my eye wanders around the frame, around the chaos, around the, the foliage and the, the limbs going everywhere. But then I can come back to the center and find it kind of a place to rest. It, it kind of reminds me of a, a painting. It's a little more abstract. I think I like that painterly feel of the image. That's probably what attracts me to it. So October brings this spider shot. The, really, the, the only thing that's that different about this spider shot is that this, this highlight in the background, I'm, I, I really worked hard to try to line up the spider with these circular highlights to give that, that kind of spotlight effect. November, I'm out looking for some light colored foliage. We got autumn going on, autumn color. A lot of people are shooting colorful autumn pictures. I'm out looking for light tones against dark subjects like tree trunks. And I, I thought this was pretty effective with these, these three darker tree trunks with their pattern, their, the vertical lines being broke up by the lighter color foliage going up. So December. We're back to where we started. A similar subject, shooting a stump. The only thing different now is I'm shooting it with a different format and with a new camera. It's one of the first images I made on this new 4x5 camera I picked up. It's a new format for me. I haven't shot 4x5 for many, many years, so it feels like I'm starting over. This will be the story going forward in 2021. A new format, new adventure. Well, I, I appreciate you coming along for the little trip down memory lane. Remember some of the positive stuff that happened in 2020? Because there were, even though there was a lot of bad stuff, some of these images make me smile. I had some, some decent trips and I came back with a few photos that I did like. And that's all you can ask for. So until next time, thanks for coming along for the ride.